There are some things that come up with, um, you know, with the game itself that you like to speak with people philosophy-wise. So that's cool, you know. It's a lot of things I don't enjoy about it, but that's, you know, it's all good. Um, a little bit, you know. Um, certainly there's a lot more of, you know, a lot of people are telling you congratulations and what a year and, you know, what you would do to them too. And they, they've had a heck of a year. And so, um, but I also know, I know what that is too. And like the guy who just said that we're on their schedule next year. <laughs> and so, you know, and so I, I, I understand what it is and, uh, and I appreciate it just like I do them. I respect the game, uh, respect the way they coach and their team, but you know, when it comes time to play, we got to be ready to go. Yeah, uh, actually, absolutely in favor of it because it gives us a chance to 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 play special teams. You know, and uh, I mean, what happened last year really, uh, you felt like. That, that took a significant amount of plays out of the game, and those were from special teams, you know, and you don't make it up really anywhere else. So, um, and so just, I mean, we, um, you know, we put an emphasis on it. So I believe in it, and, you know, I think the arguments for, well, it, it's, you're bringing more plays back in, so now injuries could, yeah, well, yeah, you, because you are more plays, but, it feels like what we've done with it, it's been so condensed that it's the impact is out of it, you know. It uh, doesn't mean there won't be an injury, but – and so I think I think what's got a lot of people uh, spooked a little bit is the unknown of it, and that's what excites me. Like, um, Fip and I have already been back there talking about, you know, we're watching all these XFL clips and you're looking at different body types and you're looking at returners and you're looking at scheme and – and so I think that's the unknown is what the coaching's for, like to mess with it. You know, you tinker with it and you figure out a, a, what's the best way to do it. How do you do it? And uh, so I, I'm excited about it. I hope it goes through today. Um, we'll see. Is it some opportunity? Yeah, I do. I, I you know, I do. I, I think, um, look, I, I think this, I think this, this gives you a chance. I think this really could bring the returner position back into play much more than it has in a long time. You know, you already have it in the punt punt return unit, but I think there is a chance the kickoff returner, this could be a, a little bit more of, um, you know, that, that, that guy can make the play uh, more than it used to be that way, you know, with where the rules have gone. Dan, do you think it gives you a chance to be innovative if smart coaches figure out some, you know, I don't know what they would be, but tactics that maybe? Yeah, I mean, I think you're, that's that's part of the trick, right? You want to feel like you, you're going to do something that is a little unique or something they're not prepared for. And really, that's what it is, right? You're, you're wanting to try to find something they're not ready for, not prepared for, whatever that is. Maybe it's been done, maybe it hasn't. But, um, but yeah, that's that's the exciting part of something new, and and the coaching aspect of it. Fip and I are like excited. I mean, we we can't wait. And I, and I feel like we have to be close. We have to be close in there, um, like like one away close. So hopefully we get it. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, look, I said this. Obviously, we were a team that, that um, look, I went into that feeling a, one way and came out a different way. Now, it, it, here's my thing is I understand when you see the clips they show of the hip drop, it's the worst of the worst. It's the absolute worst. And, and so I understand that. That's what – and you don't want anybody to get hurt that way. Uh, and, and you're out of season. You're out seven weeks, eight weeks. Um, but also, man, from a defensive perspective, you know, my job is to tackle this man and get him down as fast as possible. And, and, and that does that. And so, to me, I would, I would rather have kind of educated, let's educate, let's find a better way, let's tinker with the rules in training camp to where we can do more work that way to work on tackling, um, but, but, you know, it just, it wasn't going to go there, you know, because it is. When you show those clips, it's a vicious tackle and people get hurt. 
quarterback position now that the can is going to add their junior options. How do you address that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, certainly there's still some some guys we're looking at in free agency that can uh, bring in some competition. Um, and then, you know, we're and, and that may or may not be done before the draft, you know. I mean, we're – I know that it, it um, brings up a little more urgency for another player, uh, for sure, that can compete. Um, but then as far as everything else goes, we're ready to go into the draft, you know, and see what we can – see if we come away with something in there. Just on a personal level on that, when you've had that type of player, you just getting in contact with him throughout the process. I know he's doing yeah, I'm not going to – I don't want to comment on that. Thanks, though. Dan, I'm doing something on uh, breaking through and getting your first playoff victory. What are some of the keys to, to doing that? I know that's a broad question. Yeah, well, I think uh, I kind of alluded to this when we were getting ready for – more than anything, it's it's doing exactly what you've done all year long. I think that's important is that you don't, you don't go off your road map. You don't uh, – you know, you, you stay true to what you've been. Um, and that guys understand that to that, just like you've done all year, just do your job, you know. And don't, don't follow the, man, the crowd and all the different pressure that's involved. And, um, you know, because I think that's sometimes that's what happens. You feel like you got to do more. It's the playoffs, so I have to do more than I've been doing. And that's the worst thing you can do. That's where bad things happen. So we did a good job of that as a team. You seem relatively speak to maybe It could be. I mean, we're certainly Branch has got flexibility, um, you know, to be able to play the safety position, we believe, here in time. Um, and we already feel very confident about the nickel. He'll only get better and better. And I think really the bigger th – it's really – and and we do believe he'll be able to get there. It's how fast you get him there, you know. And Because what you don't want to do is, all right, man, he can play safety and nickel, but it takes away from his nickel play, how good he is as a nickel or how good he can become. And so it's, it's finding that fine balance between the two. And honestly, you know, I just bring this up again. Ducey was the same way uh, when we got him in New Orleans. It was, man, he, is he a safety nickel? And when we just let him play nickel, he just really exploded. And now you see here, here he is later in his career, and he can really do both. He really grew in both areas. So it's just a matter of how fast he can get there. Um, but, look, we're still going to look for safety help. That's not over either. We know we, we need some – they're going to bring in some competition in that room. And, um, and so we're – you know, our eyes are there as well. That's easier to do. Year, right? That's easier. Sorry. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, you felt that with him last year with Ryan when you just let him play Nick at the end of the Yeah. That was a little bit of what that was. You know, we, we tried to cross over some, and we felt like it just took away from, you know, we split his focus too soon. And, uh, and he'll, he'll get it. It just, man, let, let's, you know, let's spoon feed it instead of just, you know, you try to throw him out there. And, um, and so let him continue to grow at the nickel position, and, and, uh, and then we'll, he, he'll be able to tell us where we can go with him, Is you know. Oh, sure. A absolutely. Absolutely. You know, because now he's been in the system a year. Uh, he understands. He's got a whole other understanding of the nickel position, which helps. And now he can, you know, he can start, uh, you know, really diving into the safety. Um, so it does help. You know, it is. Look, it's hard as a rookie. It's not easy to come in there and, you know, learn and play at a high level and do it consistently and. So yeah, he'll he'll be a lot more comfortable this year. Yeah, well look, there again, every one of those guys we felt like fits us. You know, they, they feel a need that we had, uh, but they also we feel like are gonna fit us, the type of team we are in the locker room that, that we're about. So um, you know um, certainly look Carlton we got to play him twice and I was in that division as well before that and and uh, so I my, just myself alone, I had a good feeling of, of Carlton. You know, we didn't want to really throw at him. Um, you know, we know he's he's a good cover guy, um, and he'll tackle on the perimeter. He just there's things that he can do where 
he can take a little bit of, of his side of the field away at times, which just to have have some of that, man, goes a long way for the rest of the defense, you know, and what AG is going to be able to call. So, um, you know, so that 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 man that that that's going to help, and that's really something we feel like we haven't had here uh, since we've been here. Um, so that that was a uh, Brad did a hell of a job getting that trade done and getting it through. Um, you know, obviously Reader, man, the, he popped off the tape immediately. Um, you know, you start going through them, and 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 everybody has their own evaluations. You know, myself, Brad, the scouts, the coaches, and I mean, every one of us had full buy-in on Reader. Like, man, did you see this Reader at Cincinnati? It's like, you know, his tape was. I mean, this guy's relentless. He plays the run. He can get an edge and pass, um, and he just fits us, man. And he, he's a. Uh, um, you know, his character, uh, he's got leadership qualities about him. Everybody raves about him. So he, he's the, the idea of he and Mac opposite each other, uh, we felt like was, um, was going to help us significantly. Um, Davenport I'm familiar with. You know, we, didn't, we really didn't get a chance to play against him per se last year, but, but know him well, AG and myself. And, and the games he did play last year, he was a factor. Um, and really what you're getting is, you're getting an athletic, explosive uh, player with length. You know, he plays hard, and I think a lot of it is, all right, this, who's this guy opposite a hutch that can really crush the pocket and close it down, and whether he makes it or he sends it to hutch um, was, was really a lot of what this is. So we've kind of felt like, all right, we got a compliment to hutch, we got a compliment to Mac, and these guys collectively, you know, are going to make each other better. Um, you know, Amik. Amik was a guy that we played against. His tape was outstanding. Uh, people would say that, well, you know, he's 5'8". Yeah, but he doesn't play like he's 5'8". I mean, this guy is, uh, plays like a big corner. Uh, he's aggressive. He's competitive. He's got good man cover skills. Um, and he's smart. He's, he's a ball guy, you know. He's a football player. Um, and, and one of the things I loved is, I, you know, we, we were going back and forth with Amik, and then, um, and then we make the Carlton trade, and and then we're like, well, we're going to lose a meek. I mean, we just traded for a corn. He's like, are we going to get this done or not? You know, so like he he, he wanted to come, uh, and because to him he's coming in to, he's coming in to compete to start. He he, he wants to come in and earn his right. Um, I love that about this kid. So he fits us 100. Um, percent You know, and then Zeitler. Um, you know, he was somebody we were actually surprised that he lasted as long as he did in free agency. We thought he was going to be gone early. Uh, we, we liked him from the get go. You know, it didn't work out with Jonah. Uh, but Zeitler was the guy if, you know, um, and so we just we kind of talked to him from the get go and stayed in touch and and we were able to make it work out, you know, and, you know, certainly nobody. You're going to be hard pressed to find a guy who's played as long as he is and been as consistent and durable as he's been. So he, he'll be between Frank and Panay. He's going to be uh, he'll be a steady force in there, a consistent force. And and really, that's we just became a very veteran group, a very smart, consistent group in my mind. Especially getting Graham back, uh, and then we got Decker over there at left tackle. So um, I feel like we we have we have not stepped back as an O line. We've We've probably taken a step forward, so that's exciting. When you talk to Graham about bringing him back, you talk about the possibilities that he can play the part of Yes. Yes, I did. Hey, Dad, how you doing? I'm not going to tell you that conversation. Sorry about that. The microphone. How you doing? Good. Hey, what's your take on the kickoff? Yeah, I'm all for it. I hope it. I hope it goes through. I'm all for it. It gives us a chance to play special teams, and and with everything reduced, it takes away the impact. Uh, and then it's just about the unknown, which is awesome. Let's go coach it up. It can't be any any different, that much different than what it was uh, in the old kickoff rule, you know, that we had. So I'm I'm fired up. I'm ready. How would it uh, affect your preparation going with the draft and the rest of the things you have to do? Uh, for the kickoff, oh, it won't it won't change any. I mean, we'll, we'll we've already started looking at it, so we'll we'll we're going to be ready to go. It won't affect the way we, anything that we do draft wise, the spring, all that. I mean, we'll just 
Uh, we'll have a few ideas. We'll start working them once we get the OTAs, um, and then you know once we get into camp, if it goes through. And did you show uh, to work a scheme based on his players' talents, right? Yeah. Last year, you guys went more zone, some of that was some of that was the He's always been a guy that's man back to the yeah, absolutely it does. And, you know, we look, we want to vary the scheme. We, you know, we don't want anybody to have a beat on what we're doing defensively. But, but you do want to know there comes a time when you want to pressure and you want to play man to man and know that you can do it. Um, and, and to be able to have that ability now, you know, what's, what's funny is there's a lot of times where it really helps is, well, certainly third down, you want to play some man-to-man -man and get off the field, but also on base downs. You know, a lot of times you would love to be able to say, you know what, we're going to play man this series or we're going to play man this opening drive and feel confident about being able to do it, and especially if you're going against tendencies that you've done. But, um, you know, it, being able to play man is no different than, you know, being able to run the football or stop the run, like it's it's – it's it's kind of one of our core values to be a good team. You want to be able to play man when called upon. Um, so yeah, this this certainly will give AG more flexibility in what to call. I believe. What sort of priority is getting extensions down for Jared and Yeah, those are those are priorities. You know, those are certainly priorities, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into those, but you know, certainly there's conversations that are being had. And what makes uh, Amon Russell special? What doesn't make him special? He, 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 everything he does is why he's who he is. His work ethic, uh, his um, you know, his desire to be good, his will to overcome, um, the amount of film that he watches, the pre-practice warm-up, the post-practice uh, you know routine that he has. I mean, it's just everything about him is about being the best player he can possibly be. Being the best player, not he can be. He wants to be the best. And, and he, everything he does, it's not lip service. Like, he, he literally does everything he can possibly do to be, be the best. And, uh, and that's why. There's no secret. Like, some of you just walk, just walk around with him. Why don't you just go live with him for a while if you really <laughs> want to know what it looks like. Half the guys would say, well, I'm going to be great. And they go. They would quit day two or three. So this guy just keeps going. Hey, well, Coach. You're part of the big support process, too. No, I don't think so. I, I mean, um, honestly, I feel like it's it, as far as the preparation of it, it's very much like we've we've done before. And and I don't think we really have, you know, since we've been here, we've really, man, draft the best player available. Don't don't let the man. We we absolutely have to have a linebacker. We absolutely have to have. Don't let that. Man, just go for what you believe is going to fit your team and what the what you feel like is the best player at the time. And 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 I don't think this year's any different. I think what's unique is those, you know, first two three years, well, we did have a lot of holes. So it just naturally like, well, here we go. That worked out because we needed, you know, you got eight holes. Your odds are pretty good. You're going to get a guy that's going to fill a hole. Uh, whereas now we we feel it's not. Uh, Look, every, every team in this league's got warts. And I say it all the time, no matter how good you are, you've got areas that you're always going to want to be able to improve in. Nobody's a perfect roster, but we're, we're the best we've been in four years. And we feel like, man, we've got a lot of those holes filled. And so this kind of feels like the first draft we're going in. And we're still best player available, but we've got, you know, we've kind of got places um, taken care of going into the draft, which is, that's, that's pretty cool. You're talking about at the combine? Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, I do, but I think that's also where you got to be careful, you know, is um, <clears throat> that's where, okay, you get exposure to these certain type of guys. And, look, that's what Brad does a really good job of. There's a lot of guys that are – that that if we're going to meet with them as coaches, they're probably in our wheelhouse, right? They've already kind of whittled it down to the, these guys fit us. 
enough to where, okay, now it's good to try to build a relationship, figure them out a little bit. and But, you know, you can't just see one or two. got to see all of them then because then you'll get swayed. You know, you fall in love with a guy, but you never saw those guys over there. Um, but but I think it's it's good. You get to, you know, you don't have all day in the – you don't have all day, but at least, you know, for, for the short time you're around them, you, you get a feel of what they are, how they talk ball, do they love ball, and and uh, and so I, I think that goes a long way. What's it been like watching this? Coach Giannis, you know. Hold on. What's it been like watching this roster evolve over the years from when you got here to where it is now? Say that one more time. What's it been like watching this roster evolve over the years um, from where it was to yeah. where it is now? Well, it's been um, – you know, it's been pretty special, really. You know, and it's because um, I, I think there again, it's it doesn't. You're not always able to um, stay with the same guys. It doesn't always work that way. You hope to. That means you probably have success. And so we're doing a few things right here. But to be able to be around all these guys from where we started in 21 and see them grow and develop and what we've added and watch those guys grow from the Hutch to even Branch to the end of last year, Laporta, Gibbs, you know, um, Max, Sewell, uh, Aleem, Jack Campbell, I mean, Barnes, Iffy, you know. It's it's pretty special because you've been with them in the, you know, the highs and the lows, the inconsistencies to grow into what they're becoming and what they have become, and and we've kind of all grown together, and um, and but along the way, nobody ever nobody ever lost hope, no everybody got down, nobody ever thought we couldn't do this, and so we just kind of all grown together, and so I think the hard thing is going to be when it comes time to these guys we've invested in and been around for so long, when you're going to have to make hard decisions. That's when it's going to get real difficult, you know. We're still in a nice little window right now, um, but that time will come. That's going to be very difficult, you know, because you know what those guys are about and what they're made of, and, and they really started this with us. Coach, any, not that that's any different, but just by, I don't know, by the way the season and the opportunity and how, how excited are you, I guess? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm very excited. I, I really am. You know, I, I can't wait to get started. Um, and I know the staff's that way, too. I, I think, if anything, you know, when you, when you get over the, you know, the, the uh, licking your wounds a little bit and, and you really step back and take a look at it for what it is and where you can improve, you get really excited. I got really excited. So I feel like every day I've just gotten – more and more energy back and more and more desire um and i just you know like i'm i feel like we're going to be battle hardened and ready to go like man that's the next one you know we, we got to get over that hill and we can do it and and i love that we've got something to shoot for and something to go get um i don't know i mean that's hard to say completely i mean i would say within a couple of days i was ready to start going again but but uh, I think it's when now that we're you know you get about a month removed and look back you're like all right maybe I wasn't quite ready then like I thought I was but um, but yeah I am energized because I, I know what we're gonna I know what we're capable of doing because I know the type of coaches and players that we've got and we've only added to that and Brad's gonna only continue to add to that through this draft and and uh, I mean look that's what's exciting too there's a chance we draft a lot of guys who don't come in and start but they're quality players. And all they've done is raise the floor, man. The competition goes up. I mentioned this to Dan yesterday. They, it, the competition goes up because they're trying to take these starting jobs. These veterans only get better, and um, and they really push the they push the ceiling, you know. So um, it's exciting. It, it's exciting. Coach, I know that you're laser focused with the draft coming up and through free agency. Do you allow yourself? to take notice of what a team like the Bears have done this offseason with the number one pick coming up? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, man, they, we, I pay attention to the division, especially this time of year, you know. And, look, I know this. Uh, I, I, the Bears, I, I told everybody going into last year, I'm like, the Bears are going to be an issue. They're a good team. And, you know, because I think Coach Everflues does a great job over there. Uh, Defensive-minded coach. That defense is stiff. They're stout. They play hard. Um and offensively, man, they got weapons. Uh, they got an offensive line, and we'll see what they do at quarterback. But 
I'm not going to lie, it's nice to have fields out of that division. Um, um, but, yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of respect for what they're doing over there. So they got they got a number of picks. Uh, they're going to be loaded, ready to go. And, and I also look, I see what Green Bay is doing. Um, you know, so I, I think this division is about to get significantly uh, – better than than what it's been and I would argue it was better last year than people realize you know they, we were one one really they're one play away from Green Bay and, and us playing in the NFC uh, championship game so I think this division is about to become very difficult and that's good that's good man it's how you want it just to follow up on what, what Dave was asking about um, with such a disappointing loss in the championship game how do you how do you grow from that what's the message to your team yeah, I, I think you 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 gotta you gotta swallow that pill. Like you gotta watch it. We gotta watch it together, which we will. We we you know that's the one game you don't get to watch together. So um, we're gonna watch that. We're gonna digest the whole thing. Um, and I've already had the staff. We've sat down. We didn't watch the first half. We just watched from the third quarter on and and kind of charted a little bit of everything on you know what went wrong. Um, you know what scheme wise, decision wise. Um, Player-wise, how did you know that did, did these players in these moments step up, or was it, you know? And I tell you what, you realize when you really watch it, and you just are, just give us general thoughts. Is man, those San Francisco willed that to happen. They had players that man, they they in critical moments that quarterback made big plays. McCaffrey made big plays, made a big catch. IU made a big catch, 15 over the middle for a first down, and they willed those things to happen. And that'll just that's the next step for us. And. So I think we've got to put a tremendous amount of stress on our players before the season gets here, uh, starting in OTAs, but then certainly in training camp, a lot more than we have, and uh, and just mold them and shape them and get them there. But but that experience is going to that'll play well to us because look, you're either going to get better from it or you'll you'll just get worse because you're broken. And I just we're not going to break, <laughs> we're just not. So uh, we got two good guys, and uh, so I'm it's exciting. Daniel, yeah. Yeah. So look, certainly we're still in contact with Jay Ray. All right. You know, I don't think it's a secret uh, what we think about him as far as the type of player he is, the unselfishness. The dirty work, the versatility. So, look, I love Jay Ray, and that doesn't mean something won't get done. But <clears throat> you know, be up, be able to get people's back here. You know, DPJ was. Um, it really gave us. All right, man. We know we've got a veteran guy uh, who's played, and and will have now that he's been in our offense. Call it, you know, half of the season. Uh, or a little bit more, he, he'll have a better understanding of, of what we're doing. We go into camp. And so I think what it does, it just gives us somebody that we know can play the position. He's a bigger body guy, too, so he's a little different than anybody we've got. Um, and that, that's really what he gives us, you know. The last two questions over here. Sorry, Daniel, you're from the Miami Herald. Um, the player that uh, Benito Jones was when he first arrived in Detroit compared to the player that he is now leaving going back to Miami. Yeah, well, it's funny, man. We get him from Miami, and now he goes back to Miami. So, um, well, you're getting a better player, so I'm glad we could help and develop, and then we – no. Uh, but listen, Benito's an unbelievable guy, um, and and I would say he came in, and he really did improve. I mean, from the time that we got him, and look, he started for us. He was a starter. Um, and he, he grew so much from last year to even this year, and really he earned it. I mean, I think there was a lot of people who didn't think he, he was – would be the starter and he did start for us he was the better player and so um you know he was steady he was part of that part of the reason why we we had as good a run defense as we had and uh, so man I, I'm, I'm i'm excited for him i wish him the best of luck and uh, you know you got a good one Thank you. yep Last one. Hey, Coach, for the trade for Carlton Davis, obviously you guys got up close and personal with him in a playoff game, but what was it about his game that made you excited to go out and, and, and deal, uh, make a deal for him? Yeah, I, I think just his, his, there again, his versatility. You know, he's got length and he can run, and, and he's not afraid to tackle. So, um, you know, he, he's, uh, he's got man cover skills and the length to do it, the ability to run, and, and then he'll feel on the run. And I think I kind of mentioned this earlier, your ability to tilt from him a little bit at times and just say, hey, you, you got this side of the field or you got this player, 
and now we can Kirby and Iffy and we can kind of move them a little bit more the other way and, and help out in the middle of the defense or, or even on the other side. So it just gives it gives AG more flexibility in his calls is what it does. All right. Thank you guys. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, I, so tentatively right now, um, I've been talking to Dayball, and so I think there's a chance we could go to New York, you know. Uh, I, well, we, we got to iron it out. I mean, hopefully we get two days. Is that what you meant? Or, Well, here's the thing. You can't – you can only – you can only um, – request one like you know you can only in the preseason you only request one time hey uh, these two players we want to get together this is when it is so like last year we got the Giants we requested it and they requested it so we got it Doug fell in my lap you know they just happened to schedule it so I called Doug he's like absolutely so that it'll be that again whoever we match up with in week two you know I I would love to I would love to do two weeks again like we did last year so it's it'll be predicated on who that is you know and whether we go to them or they come to us um, but yeah I'm all for it I think so I, I, I think there's a chance I don't want to like that's not in stone so because um, I said this last year and I know mr. Mayor got on me like hey well but this thing's already out so there's a chance I don't I don't know if it's going to get done or not but we've been talking about it just because we wanted to reciprocate the fact they came to us we wanted to give it to them yeah absolutely whether we were at home week two or we had to go on the road I would love to still practice with with somebody yep